I've been hacking on phones since 2001, when I joined the MIT Wearable Computing Group. And in 2005, when I got my doctorate on kind of basically applying AI algorithms to data collected from phones, I wanted to you know, basically start thinking about uh, applications that really affect people's lives. The majority of mobile phone subscribers uh, today live in the developing world. Right? And this is, the developing world is really where we're seeing a lot of the innovation. Uh, we have this preconceived notion of like the cell phone going hand in hand with the Western business executive, but there is far more you know villagers living in the developing world using cell phones than than every Western white collar worker on Earth today. And one of the one such service that I just love is is M-Pesa. What M-Pesa is, it enables um, subscribers to send and receive money using their phones, and it and this service has has literally changed the lives of a lot of people in Kenya that I know about. With just 15 lines of code, we modified the system. Uh, we basically just said that you know, for every day that we get a properly formatted text message about the blood levels, uh, we would send 15 cents of airtime to the nurse that, that gave us this information. With that, those 15 lines of code basically turned this into a system that um, was you know, originally a complete failure into something that's now under review by the Kenyan Ministry of Health uh, to deploy nationwide. I mean, every, like, once, once the nurses began to get compensated for the information that they were, they were telling us, suddenly a switch flipped, and, uh, and everyone wanted to participate in the system. Everyone wanted to talk about what their blood levels were. People can do work you know, on their phone, earning money and airtime. You know, besides giving us information about the blood levels at the hospital, what other things, what other things can we get them to do? And also the fact that in Kenya in particular, I mean, it's an English-speaking country, it's relatively uh, educated, and you've got over 75% literacy rates, you've got a huge number of mobile phone subscribers. I mean, it's tripled, actually, since I moved there in 2006. Uh, and yet, half the country is, or almost half, is unemployed. Now, looking beyond Kenya, I mean, we're looking at, you know, well over 1 billion, perhaps close to 2 billion literate mobile phone subscribers in the developing world, many of whom are, are basically could really use an extra dollar or two a day. And the third part of this opportunity is this, this kind of the crowdsourcing idea, right? You know, there are corporations that, that are inundated with tasks that humans simply can do better than computers. You know, whether that's looking at the sentiment of a, of a blog posting or translation tasks or transcription tasks, um, there's, a, there's a bunch of these things out there. You've got a bunch of, uh, of people with a lot of idle time that are educated with mobile phones. You've got the corporations with a, a variety of different types of tasks that, um, that, they, that humans simply can do better than computers. And you've got these operators who are, who are desperately trying to find um, both something that differentiates them from their, the competition now that's, that's coming all over East Africa, but also how do you, how do you increase ARPU? Average revenue per user, and how do you how do you monetize this this huge investment that they've already um, made? Uh, we're enabling these tasks uh, to be distributed and, and completed via mobile phones. Um, you know, hopefully around the world, at least right now around East Africa. But there's there's over a hundred languages in Kenya. In the village that I was living in, everyone spoke Giriyama, and then the second language was English, and maybe the third language was Kiswahili. Uh, Nokia would love to have a Giriyama interface for their phone, but they have no idea what, what words like, like address book actually translate to. Uh, this is a photograph of uh, one of our, our users who just completed a set of, uh, well, the phone of one of our users who just completed a set of translation tasks. And uh, they're, they're receiving uh, 30 shillings, which is about, about 50 cents. And I think that there's a real opportunity for rural banking services. We're able now to kind of shoot specific surveys uh, and questionnaires at key regions of interest. Because we know the cell tower IDs and we also know the reported uh, locations of all of our users. And so we can hopefully provide that information in a, in a much more cost effective way. Uh, not only do we want to have a transcription or translation of, of different English words into, into these other languages, but also we want to be able to start creating the next generation speech recognition technology, which involves a, a huge corpus of a lot of people saying a lot of different words in a lot of different languages. We can actually give people much more targeted uh, audio ads 
because you're starting to rank, is this relevant, is this not relevant, is this interesting, is this not interesting. And we've transformed the majority of mobile phones in East Africa into a platform that people can use to start doing work and earning money. Um, we need more tasks. And I, I'm the only Westerner involved in this project. And now that the, uh, you know, the, the system has been designed and the, the accuracy algorithms have been implemented and the service is now deployed, uh, suddenly it's, it's become my job to start drumming up tasks from Western companies. Uh, this type of idea is going to become an important source of supplemental income for, uh, for a large fraction of, of people on Earth today. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll stop and open it up for questions. Thanks.